Sir, and thank you for choosing to join us to imagine a world where assessments are digital on demand. I'm Robert Riley Craig, Head of Clinical Assessment at Pearson UK, and I'm joined by Hayley White, Assessment Director at Pearson, along with our guests John Heaton, Chair of Examiners for Art, and Charlie Hammond, Digital and Innovation <laughs> Manager, and also Pearson National Teaching Award winner for outstanding use of technology. In September of last year, Pearson released the results of the Global Learner Survey, a new study capturing the voice of learners worldwide. In fact, we heard the collective voice of 11,000 learners in 19 different countries, to really to get a full picture on how people are learning. And it's loud and clear, people are taking charge of their education and technology matters to them. Our survey uncovered about eight key trends that learners across the globe tell us characterise the way they seek education. And you can read more about that survey by searching for the Global Learning Survey. In today's session, though, we're going to focus on trend number three, which is that people expect digital and virtual learning to be the, norm, the new norm in the next decade. People are using technology in every aspect of their lives, and, they now, and they're now embracing it as part of their education, whether that's from online degrees to artificial intelligence, smart devices, people see the future of learning made easier and more engaging with technology. Thinking specifically about primary and secondary education in the UK, our survey found that 86% of learners agreed that students today have the benefit of technology to support their learning, which makes learning fun and easier. And I thought I'd share that fact, as it's interesting in as much as it highlights that there's a real disconnect, therefore, between learning and assessment currently. So if people expect digital and virtual learning to be the new normal, what's the implication for assessment and therefore, how do we embrace learners and listen to their voice to make their vision a coherent reality? How do we move from the traditional pain, pepper and pen assessment world that we all know using the advances of the 21st century, which has given us the greatest opportunity to, in human history, really, to improve lives throughout education? So how do we move to a new world where, and a new norm where assessment and digital are on demand that, and that meets the needs of learners? Well, at Pearson, we believe that governments, educational institutions, employers, and social and tech disruptors are uniquely positioned to help apply their vast and unique experience to drive such a change. And Pearson also has a big role to play helping change that learning. So I'm going to hand over to Haley now, who's going to explain a bit more. So it's great to hear the voice of learners, and it's so encouraging, um, if not completely surprising that they want to see better use of technology in their learning and for us it makes perfect sense that this continues seamlessly into their assessment summative and formative we know that there are many benefits to on-screen assessment making this prospect an exciting one the benefits are, are vast and to name a few there are, there's greater variety in what we can assess using video, sound, interactive um, links um, and assessment items. There's improved readiness for employment, further and higher education, experts tell us. There's greater flexibility of the assessments that we offer, what we're assessing, when we're assessing and how we're assessing. Assessments that can be adapted based on ability rather than every learner taking the same assessment at the same time, typically at the end of a two-year course. And for us, this is a really key one right now. There's improved accessibility, allowing learners to configure the format of the normal standard assessment to their way of working, adding filters, enlarging texts, or using reading technology. It's exciting, but we know there are challenges. Currently, we have a testing regime that's based on everyone taking the same test at the same time. We know that there are challenges around school infrastructure and the access to technology. And in order to maximize the benefits of on-screen, we may need to think differently about what we're testing and when. We recognize that there is potential for the disconnect between what learners see as the future of their learning environment and how we've historically administered tests and continue to do so. So what are we doing? Our approach is to think big and start small. Currently, there are learners for whom using a laptop, including in their formal assessments, is their normal way of working. 
for them, the experience of not using the standard question paper is different from the rest of the cohort. They often type their responses into a blank document, which does not include either the question, the resources, or any delineation of time that they should take or, or the marks that they should be awarded. We think we can improve their experience by providing an on-screen test, mirroring their normal way of working, but providing the standard test with the normal structures that you would see on a, on a printed paper version. Whilst doing so, it will give us some really valuable learning about the capability and capacity for technology in assessments in schools. There's much to do, but I hope that you agree the challenge is an exciting one. We're really eager to hear from you for any questions that you may have, but first I'm going to ask Charlie and John to share their reflections with us. Thank you, Hagley. <coughs> Uh, one of the things that I'm going to talk about is uh, when we have actually marked work, we, we use uh, a system called Results Plus at Pearson, which means that all centres can actually see the marks that each candidate is given for each assessment objective. This is really helpful for centres because it means that when they look at that data, they can then think about areas where their candidates need to improve, areas where in a particular assessment objective, like for example, developing ideas, uh, that they're being really successful. So it, it's a very good way to help centres to think how they're going to improve their courses. We're also doing things like, uh, obviously, <coughs> as a chief and a chair of uh, examina examinations, we would give a, a, a traditional uh, hard copy of the chief examiner's report, which we still do, but what we're doing now as well is to produce a video of, say for example, the 2019 series, which has just happened. We can give, uh, we've just recorded a video for centres so they get feedback on that particular examination series. And this is really helpful for teachers and heads of department because it, 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 it's very interactive and it's like a face-to-face -face event that they could play at a de department meeting and think about things that they've been successful at or how they wish, what, wish to improve. So there are just two practical examples of how we're using the technology. Lovely. Hi guys. Um, I, I'm from a slightly different take. So my aspect is, is coming from FE and vocational assessment. So um, my experience really is that um, I worked very hard with capturing evidence of students that, that happens organically. So lots involved capturing lots of media and things like that. So my main focus was that the students developed online portfolios or digital portfolios and this evidence that I was capturing, skills evidence, would, would sit in their digital portfolios. The, the, the outcomes from that were that their focus was that these digital portfolios was their personal shop windows. So their focus was, I want this media to look really good because it's going to reflect out there in the wider world the skills that I've got and then it was my job or and my colleagues jobs then to look at the criteria that we were trying to address and the assignment process or the assessment process actually became a byproduct for the students because their focus was on th these digital portfolios so that was a really interesting trend with us in vocation, okay? So our outcomes were really impressive for this. It was probably about three years ago we started it, and then that informed our curriculum, which now informs our, our college strategy across seven campuses. So we're, we're developing it quite strongly there. So the underlying thing that we've got going on here is with Pearson's, what we did is small and it, 
and it grew outward. We're, we're talking about more formal assessments with Pearson, and they're in a, 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 a really strong position to, to get this done at scale, which is really um, exciting stuff. But of course, the, the bumps in the road are, are, are many at the moment, and I think like, the, the feedback and, 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 and what you give to Pearson's about is this going to work? How is this going to work? I think it so, will be such a valuable process during this, this talk for sure. Um, but we've got to look at how, how young people are interacting with their education. And, and if culturally they are learning in this aspect, and then we're sitting them down with a pen and paper and saying, tell me what you know, it ain't going to work. And it doesn't work and the gap's getting bigger. So it's, it's really exciting it's that, that Pearson are looking at this and, and really have got the backbone to push something forward and say, let's, let's, let's have a look at this and let's develop a, uh, an assessment system that we can use that fits in culturally to the way these young people are learning. Great, thanks Charlie. So that was two very different reflections from an examiner, chair of examiner's point of view and also from an educator's point of view from uh, Charlie. We're really, really interested to find out and sort of open up the discussion uh, if there's anyone in the audience that would like to share some reflections on how you think students in your school or college could benefit from digital assessment or perhaps you're already using some form of digital assessment within your environment and want to share a bit about that. So if anyone does want to volunteer, we would like to try and make this as interactive as possible. I think we've got a couple of roving uh, mics in the audience. Um, so there's anyone brave that wants to, uh, to put their hand up and share some ideas. Mm -hmm. Ah, great, we've got one down here, Catherine. <laughs> or Elaine, <laughs> here we go. If you can just uh, introduce um, who you are, where you come from, that'd be great. Yeah. Oh. Oh, pink one. Pink one's Hello. on. Oh, yes, oh. I know. <laughs> no, I'm Alex Yarnley. I'm from oh. Wolverhampton Grammar School up in the Midlands. Um, so just really interested in what you were speaking about earlier um, for students who have extra time. Um, obviously, they are quite disadvantaged having a, having a PC in front of them, uh, a word pad, and then their, their, their paper next door to them, having to sort of transfer the information that they're reading on the paper onto the computer, which uh, yeah, al already is quite, quite a challenge. Uh, would you then foresee a, a digital version of the of the paper being available anywhere soon? Uh, is that in the pipeline or is that something that's just sort of you would like to see? It's a great question. Thank you. Um, I hope, did everybody hear the question? Could you hear? Um, so the question was for the for those students that already have accommodations made during the the standard assessment. Um, would we foresee at some point in the future? The paper being available on screen so that they can they can answer in the in the format that they're accessing the assessment um, in answer to your question uh, as a giving you a straight answer I would really hope so so we are currently developing the capability to provide a platform in which the standard version of the question paper so with no adjustments made to it is provided to those students in a way that they can they can answer on screen if that's if that's just their normal way of working for which we know that there are tens of thousands for whom that's the case we are also working to ensure that further accommodations can be made to that platform so if it's about enlarging text and then being able to answer that that that's also possible um, one of the big challenges is familiarity with that platform and so we are um, looking to work with um, friendly schools who can immediately give us some feedback on what we think is a great platform but really eager to kind of really stress test it but also to look at what do we need to do to make the shift between using that platform in maybe a mock assessment environment to giving, making sure everybody's got the confidence that that can then be used in a live testing environment. And for me, that confidence is key. And so, you know, the exposure that we can get for that platform and the feedback that we can invite is invaluable. Sorry, sorry to ask another one. Can we have the okay? mic again? Um, just uh, if 
let's say for, for argument's sake that's successful uh, and, and students with special considerations uh, are allowed to do that, would you foresee then students who don't have uh, special considerations having the option to do that if they work in that in, uh, It's a great question. You've got all the good questions Sorry. today. <laughs> so um, if you didn't hear the question, um, the, the follow-up question was if that's something that's then possible for students with accommodations, would it be an option for other students? Um, and the answer ultimately is absolutely. Um, we, you know, all over Pearson, we have different capabilities for um, on-screen testing. The challenge in this very specific context is what does that mean for GCSEs and A-levels? And even the use of your word option pr provides a real challenge because the, the testing regime as it stands currently in this country is that across the awarding organisations, every student has the same experience of that test at the same time. Now, there are lots of reasons why that we know that's not the reality, the, the, um, the adjustments and accommodations being one of them. Also, the fact that different children of different abilities sit the same test in different ways. So why aren't we adapting the content of those tests based on what they tell us and show us that they know and understand? So I think that the answer to your question is yes. The big challenge is how and when and what does that look like? And I think the challenge for, for us certainly, but also for, for educators um, more broadly is what, how do we get there? Because it, part of it is about confidence and it's about the um, esteem with which we hold GCSEs and A-levels. Um, but equally, how do we ready learners to be able to confidently apply and demonstrate what they know in a, in a testing environment that could look different to, let's face it, the, the tests that we all took at the end of school and the end of college. So, so I think it is a real challenge. Great. Thanks for that. Any other questions from the audience? Great, I don't think so. I don't think there's any questions over, over there. Charlie, John, did you have any sort yeah, of... Can I, can I ask a question, yeah, yeah. Bailey? <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what about security issues? With, yeah. uh, Pitts and gonna, they're going to have to put in place something with regard to security, aren't they, and making sure that that platform is actually yeah. not going to be used... <clears throat> In security a way that shouldn't be. It's a good question, and it's um, security of question papers remains a challenge, regardless of the format that they're taken in. I think I would be as uh, brave as to say that I think it's we have a, certainly a greater control over tests that are taken on screen than we do papers that are yeah, yeah. distributed across the country. The platform that we've developed to date has. The, um, the security that would, we would need to have the confidence to use it for a live test um, in which we retain control of the, 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 the items, the questions themselves mm -hmm. until that, that live yeah. publication date. But absolutely, it has to be a consideration. Yes, again, it's another challenge, it isn't is. it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thanks for that. Was there any other questions? No, great. Okay.